Hey folks, I'm uh, with uh, Jacob here. He's set up a black soldier fly farm. And finally I found someone I can talk to about and learn from. So he's gonna take us on a tour of his, his setup. So you call this a Verti farm? Yep, that's the Verti farm system. Yeah. Um, I've made a couple of modifications to it, uh, especially for the winter. Okay. So you can see that it's got a I've got a half bar heater in there. Yeah. Um, but it's also got a fan system up on top, okay. um, extracting the air out all the time. Yeah. If we come around to the side here, you can see that I've got a uh, a fogger down there below, adding wow. some moisture. Um, and it's a bit crowded in there now. We're getting quite a lot. If you want to look up at the, I don't know how much. Are the lights? Yeah. So there's, um, what kind of lights are those again? So these are LEDs. Um, I think each one is around 200 watts. So it's not easy on my power bill, but okay. <laughs> uh, the idea was that this would show me exactly what kind of wavelengths I need to use. Yeah. Um, at the moment, I've got all of my feeding tubs in there as well. Okay. Just because this time of year is so cold, yeah. I found that nothing was actually progressing. Uh, even the new babies that I had harvested and the tiny larva, they just weren't eating. It's too cold. I even found some dead ones frozen. Okay. Like, you know, they died of exposure. Yeah. The top tub there is, um, is for the eclosion of the adults, so that's full of uh, pre pupae. Yeah. Um, so this, okay. this whole front flap here is a door. Okay. Um, it opens up? It opens up. Um, so I've got a dual layer on the inside. I've got um, a mesh. Yeah. So I can actually work without them all flying out. Yeah. Uh, which is quite useful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was uh, lesson number one. Okay. <laughs> this here, um, this is just the best method I've come up with for harvesting. It is not a good okay. method by any stretch of the imagination. But it works for you. Um, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a hybrid of two. So both of these tubs still have um, quite a lot of uh, live you know immature larvae in there yeah this system seems to be going quite well i mean i don't know how much that is i would estimate that's probably 400 400 grams um, of larvae that have harvested which is pretty good and you know? because you have so many like do you do you produce enough waste or food to do this or uh, no not for me so okay. i actually collect food waste um, so I collected from the uh, bakery and cafe around the corner. Oh, perfect. Um, so I've got, I'm not wearing it now, maybe I should have, but I've got like a little uniform that I got, oh, wow. I got printed out of Maine. Um, this is my... Six Legs Farm? Yeah, this is Six That's Legs really Farm. Cool. So these are the two types of food waste that I collect. So sweet, sweet coffee grounds. Oh yes, they love that. Speed them up. To a degree. <laughs> <laughs> They get sick of it after a while. You can't feed it to them constantly, I've okay. tried. Uh, and then just general food waste. And, yeah. and I get one of these a day. Just one okay. of these a day. So I get a lot of That's food waste. Good. You know, I was trying to record what I was doing. The five tubs of mostly mature larvae. Okay. And I fed seven oh, kilograms seven across one, two, and three. And then I also had 1.2 kilograms of food that I fed to four and five. Four and five. Um, What's one, two, three, four, and five? Um, these, so normally when this system is running on these shelves, yep. I have all of these different tubs that are labeled. Okay. And so I had, you know, I was trying to keep track of each tub and exactly how much food I was yeah. giving it so I could establish the feed conversion ratio. But like, there's probably still a few little ones. Yeah, you can see there's, there's a, few, a few little ones in there. Um, let's see. They're probably digging down for, uh, for warmth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. There we go. I can see a few there. Yeah, they're reasonable size. Group yeah, they're, there. they're alive, despite the cold. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's just coffee there. Then, because I have so much coffee waste, I thought maybe I'd try to grow some mushroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I got are one you, of those. Are you doing the pink oyster ones? or? Yeah, I really have very little hope for okay. this, but I have so much coffee ground. We tried I, it. It didn't, <laughs> didn't work that well. It's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah. Um, my advice to anybody who's trying to breed indoors is you're just going to control all your variables. Okay. You're going to make sure that, you know, that really... Temperatures is okay, lights okay. Exactly, exactly. You, and you need to be able to control it, dial it up or down at will. Okay. In this country, you need machines. And so this is my machine. Okay. Um, so this is a, uh, a jigsaw and it'll move back and forth with reciprocal motion. Um, this will catch it, it moves along these rails. So this is the top part. 
okay. um, that would go into the jigsaw and it goes back and forth. So this is my finest layer of screening. Mm. And then I have an intermediate layer and then a loose layer. Okay. And so um, that's why I like to do things dry. Yeah. Because if you do it wet, then you can't really screen. Yeah. You know. Is there any income coming in or? Yeah. Yeah. How I'm, can you? I'm, I'm selling. Um, I'm selling the black soldier fly larvae to people that own reptiles. So, um, I, don't know, I would sell like, you know, 100 grams. These ones are from early May. Okay. Um, so you know, it, it they they keep for quite a while in here. I haven't yeah. had any that that have expired and I've been doing this since yeah, the beginning of May is where I've been storing things in this okay. particular uh, bucket. Uh, in the wine, wine in cooling the, machine? That's right, in the, in the wine cooler. Um, so that seems to work quite well. And uh, who are your main uh, people? Who are your main customers? Uh, people with bearded dragons, uh, yeah. people with lizards, um, anybody that needs it on a regular basis. Um, I'd be interested in selling to people with chickens as well, but yeah. The problem is that uh, people with chickens in a city are generally more environmentally minded anyway, so they're yeah. going to recycle food to feed their chickens, uh, which is great. You know, yeah. I don't want to stop that. Um, I think there probably still is a case for feeding live grubs, okay. um, especially ones that are so high in nutrients and calcium. Yeah. But um, yeah, at the moment, I, I, I just don't feel right about selling at the same price point. There's no okay. way to differentiate a black soldier fly larvae for a lizard and for a chicken yeah, yeah. but if you sell at a chicken price you know then yeah. you'll get the the cost of shipping will be more than the product for uh, yeah. uh, selling to a lizard um, what about people who have fish um, I think you'd need a pretty big fish okay. to eat uh, soldier fly larvae um, you know maybe if you were raising perch or tilapia or something people are doing aquaponics yeah or aquaponics like you probably should but if you're doing aquaponics, quite frankly, if you've got the space and the effort, you should be doing your own black soldier fly. And it's turning out to be a lot more difficult than I thought to yeah. find people that are interested in buying black soldier flies. Um, but maybe it's the wrong time of year. Uh, when it gets cold like this, lizards actually eat less. They begin to brumate. Okay. So a lot of people that own lizards aren't really buying that much food because okay. um, the lizards are basically hibernating. Yeah. Cool. So that's essentially the system. Well, thank you, Jacob. No problem. And hopefully we'll get some more updates from you soon. Yeah, love to. Take care. Okay.